and remind ourselves about the Father's love for us. That the debt's been paid, not because of anything that we've done, not for our own merit, but because we deserve it. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done for each and every single one of us. And you set us free today. As we soak into looking into your love for us this evening, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to touch our hearts as we go deeper into you. We thank you, Father God, that you are here with us tonight. We ask you to bless each and every single one of us as you continually do. As we open up our hearts and our ears this evening to receive you through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So welcome everyone to the new series, Parenting. It's, um, it's a really huge topic, as we know. And over the next seven weeks, we're going to be looking at the seven principles of parenting from a biblical standpoint. And the one I've been dealt with tonight is love. Really challenging. Do you know what I mean? Really challenging. What is love? What is love? Remember that song before that when it came out, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. <laughs> Because we know love hurts. We know love is painful, but the love of God is here for each and every single one of us. And each week we're going to be looking at each of these topics specifically and how each one of us can utilize and grab hold of these topics and improve by using these spiritual principles to improve our own parenting skills. And after the seven weeks, we're going to continue until Christmas. Continue looking at this area. Because we know that parenting is such a huge part of our lives. And I feel that as a ministry, we really need to take some time. We really need to take some time to look at our relationships with our children and also seeing if that is mirroring our relationship with our father. Notice I said relationship, I didn't say religion. We're gonna be delving in what, that, what does that relationship look like today, where we are. We're gonna be looking at what the Bible says around that relationship. Because we know sometimes we forget to focus on our relationships. We come from a background of addiction, most of us. We know that the disease of this illness is self-centeredness. It's all about self, me, myself, and I. So we're going to be looking at a biblical standpoint of parenting and what as men and women that we've been called to do when we've been entrusted with children. The Bible talks about, and there are many scriptures about um, children in the Bible. It says children are a gift from God. And both as men and women, we know that there are different responsibilities and we're also going to be looking at some of those responsibilities that we've been entrusted on with our children. So this week, the topic's love. And when I was praying, I was asking the Holy Spirit, you know, what should we speak about? But nothing really screams out in this one because if I was to get stuck into self and looking at parenting and, and my journey around parenting, 
it ain't been all glorified. It ain't been all wonderful. It's been a real difficult challenge and a real difficult area. In fact, there's been quite a lot of areas that, um, that have caused quite a lot of pain in this particular area. So it was easy for me to move away from self. I think that's sometimes a really good idea and focus on the Father's love. Because as believers, that's really what we're called to press into. The love that our Father has for each and every single one of us. As it says in, in that song that we just listened to, and that was in 1 John 3, that how great is the love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Now, what a, when we look at that, you know, what a, a, an unmerited bit of favour that we've got God seated in the right hand in the heavens right now that, that is calling us here on earth his children. Because that's who we are. And the reason the world doesn't know us is that they don't know him. So they don't acknowledge that we're children of God because they don't know God. So they'll probably look at us as nutters if we was to go around and say, listen, we're children of the Most High. We're children of the King of Kings. We're children of the Lord of Lords. We're, ch we're children of <laughs> the creator of this whole world and the universe and the stars and the moon. We are his children. They look at you as if you're mental because they don't know him. But we know him or we are called to know him. Or as believers, we should know who our God is. And in this scripture, it goes into a little bit more depth, and I'm going to go into it because I think it's really important. Where's it gone? It goes into a little bit more depth. It says, dear friends. It's like, imagine that God seated in the right hand of the heavens right now. He's looking at this platform right now. He's saying, dear friends. Dear friends, he's talking to you. Right now, picture this. Picture this in a different realm. That now we, now you are children of God. What will we be that has not yet been made known? But we know that when he appears, because we know Jesus is coming yet. Yeah? Is he coming? Or is it just a myth? Yeah, that we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Imagine that. Imagine the mystery behind that, that we know who Jesus is. We know he's all conquering, all powerful. And no wonder that we should be waiting for his coming, because it says that we shall be like him as his children. Wow. Now, that's some kind of promise. I can tell you that I'm excited about that promise. I'm excited about just listening to the fact that in this piece of scripture, it says that when my Jesus comes, I'm going to be like him. Imagine that. Imagine that. It says, it says everyone who has this hope, for we know about hope, that hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. And it says everyone who sins breaks the law. Because we know that sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sin. He came to take away the sins of the world. And in him, there is no sin. So imagine that. We're going to be like him. So in us, there's going to be no sin. Amen. That no one lives in him keeps on sinning. Wow. Wow that no one who continues to sin has either seen him or know him deep. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the enemy because the enemy has been sinning from the beginning. And the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the enemy. 
That's why he appeared. That's why he came to destroy sin in this world. No one who was born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. But he cannot go on sinning because he's been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. That anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone that does not love his brother. This is the message you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one, who murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because of his own actions. They were evil, and his brother was righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you, that we know that we have passed through death, that we're reborn, that we're born again. Because we love our brothers, anyone who does not love remains in death. Deep. And anyone who hates his brothers is a murderer. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brothers in need, and there's no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with action and in truth. And this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Because whenever our hearts condemn us, well, God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. And dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, that we have the confidence before God, that we receive him, that anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is the command, to believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and to love as he commanded us. And those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit. That he gave us very 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 powerful piece of scripture and today we're gonna take things back to basics to where it all began to try and understand a little bit more about that deep passage of scripture and if you go through one john three he talks so much in that passage in one john about his children about what's required of his children so before we start talking about what's required um, from our children, I think it's important as believers to look and understand what's required from us as children of the Most High. The scripture says, how great is the love of the Father. Now that we are children of the Most High, we all know that parenting is not easy. And I don't believe God intended it to be easy. Imagine what it must be like for God who looks after all his children. Imagine. Imagine, right, I mean, I've got six. Chloe's got four. Nazarene's got one, two, three, four. Is it Naz? Yeah. <laughs> right. So imagine how many children God's got. Wow. Amen. Imagine how difficult that must be. That's why he's God, eh? Because he looks after all his children. I couldn't imagine. At times, it could be pretty frustrating for him. You can imagine what it's like when we are, what it's like with our children. Imagine what it's like when we see our children you know, doing things that they don't want to do, saying things that they shouldn't say. Imagine what it's like from God from heaven looking down at us, his children, us doing things that we shouldn't be doing, maybe saying things that we shouldn't be saying. Imagine what it's like. It's absolutely incredible. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And let's read verse 7. Anybody got that? 1 John chapter 4, verse 7.
I've got it. Go. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. Amen. Our recovery depends upon God's love for us. Our life depends on God's love for us. And it's the most important love that we can have. We know this type of love is called the agape love. And it says, dear friends, let us love one another. And from, and from love, that love comes from God. That everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And it says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us, that he sent his only son, he sent his only son into this world that we might live through him. This is not that we love God, but it's that he loved us and he sent his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins so that the debt could be paid so that we could be set free. So we could be released from the bondage that the first Adam set us in. That God sent the second Adam, Jesus, to set us free. And it says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives inside of us. He lives inside of us. Isn't that an amazing mystery? This is how it works. That God is love, and through love, he lives inside of us. Wow. And this is how we know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. That we know that God is love, and he has given us his spirit of love. Amen? Amen It's really powerful. I just, you know, as I as I tune into this, for somebody who, who's angry, who's hated and been resentful and been, you know, in that place, not even knowing what love was really all about. When I read this and I start to understand the father's love, it puts me into a different perspective. Because he's given us his spirit. And we know and have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of this world. And if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they are in God. And so that we know that we can rely on the love of God. Amen. We can rely on the love of God. Because God is love. And whoever lives in him, lives in God. This is how love is made complete among us. How it works, eh? Sounds so simple. So that we'll have this confidence on the day of judgment. We spoke about Jesus' coming, that we will have this confidence. We will have this confidence on the day of judgment. That we're just going to breeze into that place to become like him. The God that we, we praise, the God that we love, the God that is seated right there in the heavenly realms right now, looking down on us, that we will have the right to become like him. Amen. That we'll have a confidence on this judgment day and in this world that we are like Jesus. Imagine that. Sinners saved by grace, going to be like Jesus. And we also know this. And I want you to hold on to this, that there is no fear in love. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, it tells us. He's given us a spirit of power and a sound mind. And that's why it's important that we get renewed and regenerated in the spirit. And we walk by the spirit, not by sight, but by my spirit. Hallelujah. And we know that perfect love 
perfect love drives out fear because fear has nothing to do with punishment. Nothing. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Amen. We love only because he loved us first. And whoever claims to the love of God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. It's deep. That piece of scripture there is deep. For whoever does not love their brothers and sisters whom they have seen cannot love God, who they have not seen. And he has given us this command that anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. Ooh. I had to read the whole section. I just wanted to read a couple of pieces out of that section, but I had to read the whole section because it was too powerful not to, and also it would have been miscued if I didn't read the whole passage because I wouldn't have been able to give you the full picture. It says, so in reality, love is a choice. And in action, in action, that God is the source of our love. So if we don't know how to love, let me just explain to you. God is the source of your love. Jesus, through his atoning sacrifice, through what he'd done on the finished work on the cross, is the source of our love today. Because Jesus showed us perfectly what it means to love. Because everything he did in life and death was supremely loving to all mankind. And the Holy Spirit gives us that power. It gives us that power that lives in our hearts. That's why it's really important that we understand that we have to make this journey from the head to our heart. Your knowledge will not get you there. Your theology will not get you there. Your intelligence will not get you there. But your love will. Your love. The Holy Spirit gives us that power to love because he lives in our hearts. And he makes us more and more each day like Christ. Imagine that. More and more each day like Christ as we sow into that relationship with him and it is about that relationship and the question I want to ask all of us today including myself what does that look like for you today that's a challenging question that you need to ask yourself what does that relationship look like today mine's always challenging Thank God that we have Christ who loves us. Thank God that we have God who sent his son, that through Jesus, that he atones all our sins and brings us into that right standing with him. And he perfects us. He takes away all our character defects. He strengthens us in our weakness. He loves us that he wants to take us all the way through and prune us through that narrow road. That we'll be applying this scripture to parenting today. And although that this can apply to anyone in your lives, we have to understand the world thinks that love is whatever makes a person feel good. And sometimes we can think that. So they feel that they have the right to be sacrificed or sacrifice moral principles. If you've done a thorough, thorough step four, it says that moral. And when we come into looking at that, those moral understandings, we have to look at those areas in our lives and others' rights in order to obtain such love. Because that's the opposite of real love. 
It's selfishness. We have to take away. We have to die to self. We have to. We have to get out of the way. We lose it in our recovery program. You know, when we start looking at that, it tells us on a daily basis that's what we need to do. And if we truly know God and his sacrificial love, it will be evident in how we treat each other. I'm challenged every day around my walk, around my behavior, around my actions, around my motives. And we all need people around us to help us because we all know about denial. We all know about disillusioned. We all know about being dishonest with our own selves. We're going to look at a few areas. So the first one being, if you just want to look at the people that are in your life. Husband, children, partners, friends, sponsors, mentors, pastors. Just ponder on that thought for a minute. If you have a piece of paper, write down the main people that are in your life. The main people that are in your circle. The main people that you spend your time with. Amen. I saw some of you writing. That's good. Secondly, we're going to look at activities. That you spend time doing. What is it that you enjoy doing? Ask yourself that question. Who are the main people in your life? Who's in that inner circle? I'm not talking about the pals that you just ring up once every six years. I've got thousands of numbers in there, they're not all in the inner circle. What is it that you do in that spare time? So first one is who's in that circle? Secondly, we're going to look at the activities that you spend time doing. What is it that you enjoy doing? And what is it that you spend your time doing. So the first one was the people that are in your circle that you spend time with, the activities that you like doing, the activities that you like doing and enjoy, I should say, And then what is it that you do in that spare time? And then lastly, we're going to look at, welcome, Daniel, welcome, Matt. We're going to be looking at things that you're attached to. So we're just doing a, just a quick exercise. Um, we're talking about the, a relationship with the father's love. We're looking at a few areas. And the first one is 
You just want to look at the people that's in your life. Maybe you want to write them down. What is it that you spend your time? What activities do you like doing? What do you enjoy? And who are we attached to? So when we're looking at the people, the activities and the things that you're attached to, so, so for example, you could be things like, I like using my mobile phone. How much time do I spend on that? Are we attached to that mobile phone? Might be I like going to the gym. So things that you've written down, that these would be areas in your life where you love. So anything that you've written down, these are going to be attached to areas in your life that you love. Does anybody want to give me an example of what they've written down? I've, sorry, can I come in, Ivar? Of course you can. So when I'm really looking at it, it's like, yeah, the phone, you know, and sometimes, yeah, it can be the phone, it can be, you know, because my, my life, not at the moment because I'm like moving, doing all this, just so much at the moment. But usually my life is work, Kyle, and then any, and prayer. And then the spare time is eating. Sometimes I can be just like sweet stuff. But I know that's something, it, the chocolate, like things like that. It's like, um, that's like a fix. That's like one of my fixes alongside, you know, being attached to my phone, like unhealthy sort of stuff. What I know I need to look at, Amen. you know. Thank you, sister. Well done. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you yeah. for um, stepping up to the challenge. I've got um, Gemma there. Yeah, um, for me, very similar to Sarah, um, like when once the kids are in bed, like all I literally want to do is just sit on my phone and aimlessly scroll through stupid videos. And um, so my phone is a big um, barrier that stops me I believe stops me connecting with my children I've tried to um like I now try and spend time off it in the day but come the evening I just literally want to like zone out basically and I justify it by saying I don't watch tv so that's my excuse <laughs> amen Gemma beautiful <laughs> Chloe Yeah, I was thinking about um, this earlier. Um, there's like two sides to me, and I'm not sure whether it's to do with just not knowing how to live that balanced life, like having that lack of knowledge of having that balanced life, because I'm either one extreme or the other. I'm either procrastinating on my phone constantly eating drunk constantly but then I'll go through a season where I'm really strict and I'm and I'm in the word and I'm I'm eating healthy and I'm not on my phone I can't seem to find a balance I can't seem to find a balance and I think is that just because I've never had a balance it's either been I've been deprived or I've been indulging um I've is that the addict behavior? Amen. Amen. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Well done. Well done. Well done. So these things that you've written down, if you took the challenge or if you took the 20 seconds, 30 seconds to tune in to, to connect. Oh, Gemma. Sorry, Gemma's right. Gemma. Go, Gemma. <clears throat> yeah, I would say um my routine is uh, it's pretty hectic. I do try to get out every day because I've got the dog, so I have to get out. So I do like walking around parks. I'm tried, trying to be more intentional of 
leaving my phone at home or keeping my phone away so that I can be fully present, like, you know, just to take in some nature um, or keep an eye on Joe. Um, however, issues for me, um, oh, I'm going to the gym. I've stopped, finally started back my fitness after nearly four years out, um, which can be tough trying to build that in, like, say, minimum three times a week. Um, uh, so I'm trying to trying to be disciplined around that. But I think issues for me is um, not always nailing a routine. Um, so like I can, yeah, just just um, not have my son settle down for bed and then like make come on a meeting. Um, so not nailing a routine and not really having any time downtime to think about what what are my hobbies like what do I enjoy I know I've got the gym and I go for walks maybe that's it but nothing really creative um and yeah so I, I don't know it's difficult my, my routine's just jam-packed like it's like I'm constantly like on the go that's what but, but because of my own like cleaning I drive myself insane I'd say cleaning is a big 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 thing for me almost like a hobby like I have to clean the house and get everything has to be immaculate or I can't cope <laughs> okay and it takes a lot out of my time which so you've is cleaning helpful. you've got cleaning you've got your job you've got your gym um some some people put their mobile phones nobody's put who is in their circle we all latched on to the second or third part Chloe um, I've got my husband, my sponsor, my sister. Amen. Anybody else want to come in? I think it's really important that we look at who's in our circle. Gemma. Um, yeah, mine's um, mainly my husband and then anyone else that he brings around the house, basically. Um, that's, that's all. <laughs> and my children, obviously. Amen. And, and, and Sister Chloe. <laughs> Sister Chloe. Easy. Sarah Lou. Um, well, my little boy. Amen. Carey, well, when I do get to see him when Amen. he comes back. But I need to make more effort with more people because sometimes I can be comfortable in just the routine what I'm doing already Amen. which is quite selfish bless you I love that you challenge yourself down there bless you bless you love that anybody else want to come in don't want to talk about your circle no secret secret society is it <laughs> okay go on Emma so who's in my circle then? Um, Did we lose her? No, she's still there. Better now. We lost you there. Can you hear me over? Now we can, now we can. Yeah, it was because my headphones were in. So who is in my circle? So my circle, I have my my boys my children uh my fellowship friends amen god god is in my circle wow first one to mention god powerful so so i have god in my circle my my children my family not all the time but as much as i can get to like see them i'm trying to make more an effort lately and um you know fellowship friends wow well done, Emma. Powerful. Thank you. Nazarene. Come on, Nazarene. Long time no see. I know. Nazarene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had to think hard about this one because I've been feeling a bit sorry for myself with this and I know it's an area I need to work on. I did. And then I can't open my mind up straight away sometimes. I need to spend a bit more time or listen to other people. But yeah, um, I got my mentor, spiritual mentor, my kids, obviously, my mm -hmm. granddaughter. Nev, my partner, uh, my sponsor, 
recovery friends um you know but that's a bit inconsistent so I wouldn't necessarily class that as in my circle um as yet properly um sponsor families coming into my circle a little bit kind of my extended family um and yeah God's pretty not much been in the picture much it's kind of on the outer circle if I'm honest that's where I'm at Amen. Bless you, sister. Really good to see you. Missed Thank you. Yeah, you too. It's really good to see you. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. And welcome, Matt, and welcome, Daniel Kay. Good to see Thank you, you, Sister Amy. Um, and it's always great to have um, new people. If you want to put your number in the chat, we can add you to our mailing list. Love to see you again. Love to connect with you, you know, offside of the meeting, and we can uh, just give you a formal welcome. But it's great to have you with us. So the reason why I put these things down is because the things you've written down, these will be areas in your life where you love, but your children, because some of you mentioned children, can see where our priorities are. I know my kids go, daddy's on meeting. They constantly say, daddy's on meeting. Daddy's going meeting on daddy's watching beer pool. <laughs> daddy's on meeting or daddy's watching Liverpool. I think like, God, <laughs> what, a, what a balance that is, eh? And it says, um, it also says that there'll be cases or areas where they will see our priorities are sometimes that we think that they're only young, but they may even be teenagers or they may even be older, but they are watching what our priorities are. It doesn't matter how young they are, children are very, very bright and astute. So we will see that God's love can help us as parents to counteract our natural selfishness for things that we desire. God's love can counteract that because his love reveals itself in his commitment to us and his sacrifice for us takes away and takes over or should take over all our emotions that have faded away. That we know that children, that we know that children, we know that children learn God's love through the sacrificial commitment that we make to them. We can take and teach them and help them and train them in the ways of the Lord. So we need to understand that commitment and sacrifice are the bricks and mortar in our long-term relationships. Commitment and sacrifice. So if we're building relationships here in this ministry, you know, we need to keep building those bricks and cementing them and valuing them and keep building them and growing them. And that's how we get long lasting relationships. Most of us in our recovery and our past and our past life, as soon as there's an issue or there's a problem with a particular relationship, we run. We don't want nothing to do with them. It's not the way in the kingdom of God. God wants us and wants us to build on our relationship with him and also with our brothers and sisters. That's what all the 630 Le Leviticus laws have been hinged upon. That we know that, I don't know about you guys, but I'm praying for a long-term relationship with my wife daily. I'm praying for a long-term relationship with my children. And I'm praying that these relationships don't break down i'm praying also that i can break any generational roots or curses that may have been put upon my life through my forefathers and the only way that i can continue to stay firm in that is in prayer so the question that we need to look at here as each and every single one of us, when we talk about that relationship, is what is our relationship like? 
in terms of our prayer life. It's deeply important that we look at what that really means to us. Really, it's really important. I'll tell you why. We have to pray with our eyes on God, not on our difficulties, not on our circumstances, not on our situations. Charles Spurgeon said, he said he'd rather teach one man to pray than 10 men to preach. Why? Because he knew the foundation and the importance of building those bricks in those relationships is in that prayer life that we can hear directly from God. And we can only do that if our prayer life is strong. Mother Teresa said that prayer is not asking, but prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depths of our heart. C.S. Lewis said relying on God has to begin all over again every day as if nothing had been done. We've got to keep going. Rick Warren says the more you pray, the less you'll panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. The more, the more you feel, the more you'll be patient and less pressured. And I love what Oswald, Oswald Chambers said. He said, prayer does not fit us for the greater work. Prayer is the greater work. And I'll put these um, in the chat. We need to understand that the only way that we can stay in communion is in our prayer life. We all need to switch it up. We live in a culture where many people struggle with commitment. We see... Uh, fatherless children all over the all over the world today you know I came up from that broken background myself we call it dysfunctional families we see in the world today commitment to struggle in marriages marriage rates are down cohabitation rates are up and as Christians we need to remember we need to be reminded of the sacramental power of the Lord our God we need to be reminded of that because he is bringing us together for the good. He's bringing us together. He's bringing us together. We need to be, remember and celebrate the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus offered to us sinners, because we're all sinners. No one's better than each other. We're all saved by grace under the merited favour that we deserve by love. Sin is sin. That Jesus offered us a way out. He enjoyed the very warmth of God through our rebellion. So we need to sometimes look through our rebellion and sin that he entrusts us with these children. The children that he's given us. He said it's, a, it's like a reward. Today, too many children are cheating like trophies. He entrusts us with these children. Whether that be spiritual children birth, whether children adoption. As children, we should start living the way, as children, that we should start living the way he expects us to. Because Jesus voluntarily paid the penalty so that God the Father, God the Father could be just holy and merciful so that the sacrifice that comes with the salvation and the benefits of sacrificing of our children could mean that the salvation through that sacrificial commitment on the cross. Our eternal destiny is changed. I just want to ask you, what are you sacrificially committed to? We're going to look at some of the sacrifices that as parents we should be making for our children. One of the reasons why I'm here is because my mum prayed for me daily, morning, noon and night. She stood in the gap around my addiction. She stood in the gap around circumstance, day, noon and night. And that's one of the things that we need to be doing for our children. 
We need to be praying for their future, praying for their schooling, praying for God to, to move in their lives, to protect them, to guide them, to lead them, to comfort them, pleading the blood over our children. We must have emotional stability. Again, it's important. We can't be double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let your yes be a yes. Let your no be a no. We have to be firm but fair. Thirdly, we have to try and be financially stable. Let's remind us that stability can be different to each and every single one of us. This evening, it doesn't say that we need to be rich, but we need to have freedom. We need to have a food for these desires. I'm sure we get the gist of what I'm trying to say here that some of the sacrifices that we will struggle with, that we know, and that's why we need to rely on our Father in heaven, not on ourselves. The Bible says, trust in the Lord your God and lean not on your own understanding and all our ways. This is why we need Jesus. God wants us to offer ourselves wholly, wholeheartedly, living for him with every part of our being because Jesus offered himself for our sake. He died for us to live so that he can live inside of us. But if we're struggling with any of these areas, that's what Jesus is there for, to act on our behalf. That we can come with that humility. He can act with justice. He can act with mercy and humility, just like he always does. We learn love by looking at the love of God. He showed us that we can see through what price he paid for the atoning sacrifice. But there is no greater love than his. No greater love than his. When our children are driving us insane, we've picked up the toys for the hundredth time today and they've checked their food, frying it across the kitchen. Just think about God's love for us. When they're shouting, when they're screaming, when they're getting hot-tempered, when they get frustrated. We see it all during the day. We've just come out of six weeks' holidays. Hallelujah. It's like coming out of the war zone. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> for my sins. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for the second chance. But war. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. That we know that God's love for us and we can think about how many times we fall short and he opens his arms and welcomes us back. He doesn't get better. He just doesn't get resentful. He just doesn't get angry. He just welcomes us back. As somebody who's failed miserably at parenting in my past, as a disciple of Christ, I know that one of the costs of my family is that it can bring huge tension and strife. So I have to be careful that I'm present in my relationship. One of the ways I dealt with um, my other children, my boys, was, Dad, just give them a bit of money. Presence, not present. That's all right, I'm working 24 hours. That's all right. They don't need to see me. And I failed miserably. We must remember, we must be reminded that our first ministry is at home. Particularly if you've got children. If you're putting anything before your home ministry, something needs to be looked at. I had a really fractured relationship with my own dad. And I suppose you could say that generational curse was passed on to me. My oldest son, who's now 18, he, he don't want to see me. He has a lot of hate in his heart. And I knew when I was given a second chance from God with my girls that I had to do things differently. That we must be demonstrating our love to our father. 
no matter how painful it is, I still pray for him. He knows I'm there. He still rings me up. I resentfully sometimes give him money, you know, and I think all I want is your love. But like it took me 30 years to this hope. We must be demonstrating our love to the father so that our children can witness. My girls love praying to Jesus with me. They love it. They know Jesus. They know Jesus. My two-year-old can say Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God, the Trinity. Because these are the things I didn't do last time. Love reveals itself in his commitment. And I pray every day that God can sustain me to commit to continue doing these things because I need his power. I need his strength because I know I can't do it in my own strength because when I did try and do it in my own strength, I felt miserably last time. So I ain't doing repeating the same mistakes and expecting different results today. Love reveals itself in his commitment to us and his commitment to him. That we know that children are a heritage from the Lord that they're an offspring, a reward from him. They're like arrows in the hands of a warrior. And our children are born in one's youth. Blessed is the man who quivers, who is full of them, that they will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Did the wisdom of trusting God in building a house, but he also understood that a home is built by more bricks than in wood, that they must be carefully shaped and formed, that they must be guided with skill and strength. They must be given care and they will not fly straight. Hallelujah. They are extensions of warriors, strength and accomplishment. We thank you, Lord, that they have the potential for much good. But if not caused in the right direction, just like Cain and Abel, can also be for much evil. That's why it's important that we are right with the Lord. And on the other hand, We've been called with our commandment that we as children of God must honour our own mothers and fathers. Honour them. It says in the Bible to honour our own mother and fathers as children of the Most High so that we may live long. Who wants to live long? We know that there's a reward. We know that there's great blessing and happiness in having many children. Let's make many prayers because we know that many prayers will bring much blessing. It says, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate, that the gate is in the ancient city that was placed by business injustice. This verse speaks of children of the godly having places of prominence and influence in their communities. You know, I've been looking at, um, you know, the new cabinet shuffling, you know, and, 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 and things that's going on in the world, that God is looking to place this generation of children, our children right now, into the kingdom, into the community, into this world, to be that salt and light of this world as believers. Hallelujah. And we need to be praying and we need to be in that place and to be praying for each other that we can see that being fulfilled. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God shine his face upon you and give you his peace. Sarah, you had your hand up. You can come in. Um, no, it's just something what you were saying earlier is, you know, like, um, am I, are we present? You know, sometimes I, you know, like with even with my boy, it's like sometimes I can be, I can spend quite a lot of the time up in my own head, you know, and it's not a nice place sometimes to be like my thinking is not, you know, just where I need to look at it to really like have probably deep prayer around it so that I am sort of present, you know, with my boy present with the lord you know getting into prayer quicker amen amen sarah that's not a problem at all we can um, 
we can arrange that and we can um, arrange um, some sessions for you um, with the ministry team and um, we can help you with that. It'd be a great pleasure to do that. Anybody else want to just raise your hand and come in if you want to come in? Thank you for that, Sarah. Chloe. Hi. Um, yeah, I've just been um, having, you know, I had a real revelation um, over the past few days about, um, you know, uh, understanding our, understanding our, um, identity in Christ and what what Christ has done um to set us free um and as as a parent who was in a in addiction you know as my children you know as my children were growing up it, it and I've seen in the history of my mother-in-law um her parenting and even my recent parenting is 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 guilt parenting is guilt um parenting through guilt and and coming to see how toxic and dangerous it is for families it's so how toxic and dangerous it is for our relationships with our children um where where we just we 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 um have that guilt and shame still um, and no good comes from it no good comes from guilt parenting it's just it's just um you know the kids are the kids think especially as they get older you know I've, I've got my teenager's stepdaughter and um the guilt parenting because they're very clever and they're very smart and they can manipulate it more and it they just like you said either um, that's what's been coming to me a lot is your yes must be your yes and your no must be your no like we can't be in out we, we, we should have also have safe boundaries for our children to know what's wrong what's right you know that's love God tells us very clear what's wrong and what's right he has given us the word and as parents we also need to love our children with discipline we need to love them with boundaries um, and I find for myself that where I've been in addiction and I've got a lot of guilt and remorse over the things and actions that I've done, you know, um, it, it turned into guilt parenting where I just let my stepdaughter get away with a lot more than she should have. And it just caused complete havoc and toxicness in the household. Um yeah and it's and it's just coming to understand that god forgave us god our father forgave us he wiped the slate clean so that means he must no i'm not saying to disregard what our behaviors from the past I'm not saying disregard that and saying that he wiped the slate clean so we can have a new home a new way of life a new understanding and that's the authority under god's law so I think it's so important to remember that even though, yes, we have fallen short, um, especially for addictions are so, you know, we let so much into our home um, and we're in the processes of, we're in the process of, you know, um, putting our, house, our household on the right path to God. And that's not an overnight thing. That's a, that's a journey. Um, but this guilt parenting is really the devil's um, game because we're never going to grow if we're constantly, you know, still looking at our past mistakes and parenting our children through guilt. You know, we should be parenting our children through love. Um, yeah, I just had that revelation recently and I just wanted to share it. Thank you. Amen, sister. Thank you for that. Absolutely beautiful. Keep up the good work. Matt M. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, Matt, Six and Love Addict, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, appreciate being here. Good to be here. Saw this uh, listing on a thread. And I just really feel so grateful um, to found you, but also so grateful that um, 
that I really feel, man, God has been telling me over the last couple of months and it's actually, I've kind of really finally um, acted on it that, you know, to stop worrying about my, my 13 year old boy. I have a 13 year old and an eight year old and they grew up in different eras and the 13 year old one has some anger. It's not, it's not too bad, but it's there. It's anger, it's disrespect, it's disregard. And I've been trying to fix it or, you know, I like to try to fix things. And really, I feel like a couple of months ago, I felt like, wow, God's telling me, I think he's saying like, don't you stop worrying about him. Just go forward. Like my life is growing. I'm growing, you know, I'm building a future for him. And, and I really just such a load off, you know, clearly I'm, you know, I'm still working with a therapist about it. I had set one up for us and now I'm just working with that guy individually. He's saying the same thing, just like, you know, especially I'm grateful for my eight year old because, and in a way, like my eight year old and I have like a model relationship, you know, we have a good relationship. So Luke can see the 13 year old can see, all right, you know, daddy's safe. He shows love. And then he's kind of being disrespectful. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, tip, I'm by nature, I'm an authoritarian and I'm a disciplinarian, but I, but I had to give that up. And uh, I believe that that's okay. It's going to rebound with love and just leadership and going forward rather than trying to say like, all right, let's, fix this anger or hey start to treat me with more respect you know so my feelings get hurt but i really feel strongly about this i'm very grateful for it so that's it thank you bless you, bless you. Where, 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 where about are you matt in la in la wow well, yes. glendale which is on the east side bless by passing yeah yeah bless you yeah thank put your, put your digits in the chats man let's catch yeah up. Gemma, I, Gemma got them wonderful god bless you god bless you excellent excellent Excellent. Anybody else want to come in before we close? Okay. Next week, we're going to be looking at respect. We got short me. Got short me. <laughs> respect. So that's going to be a, a, an interesting topic. I believe that's probably, I think it's um, Isaac Abul that's going to be doing that one. So I look forward to that. And um, yeah, um, if there's anything that you want to talk about um, or anything that might come up where you don't need any prayer on, particularly after that, you know, feel free to uh, put it in the group and uh, we can pray with it. We can pray with you about anything, any circumstances. Sarah, we'd be in contact with you. Good to see you, Nazarene. Can we just um, uh, pray for our sister, um, Amy, before she goes, please? Um, she's not in particularly good shape so um sister um nazarene would you like to do that for us yeah sure um i don't know any circumstances or anything but father god we just lift amy up to you lord and just thank you that you know everything that she's struggling with father god everything that she's up against and you're in it in the situation with her and father i just pray for peace of mind i pray for clarity wisdom understanding and i just thank you for the strength father god that you'll be delivering to her jesus that you are delivering her father god i thank you for transformation that you're doing within her life father and just reminded of how dark it is before the dawn. Father God, I just pray protection around her, Father, and I just pray she stays close to you, Lord, that you bring people around her to encourage her and build her up. And I pray, yeah, just your protection, Father God, put your ministering angels around her. And I pray you open doors, Father God, that are not opening. Father, I just bind anything that's stopping them doors from opening, Lord, that you make a way you make a way possible, you make a way through, Lord, and you close the doors that are not of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you, brothers and sisters. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for um, listening, um, and thanks for being here as our brothers and sisters. We just want to just close, and I just want to pray that the Lord that, that covers each and every single one of us and our children right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I just just lift up every single member here tonight, those that are here, those that are not here. I lift up every meeting that we do this week in the mighty name of Jesus in this new season. And we're back on Saturday night at um, 8 p.m. and also Sunday night at 8 p.m. So we look forward to seeing some of you guys there. And um, we're just welcome to um, Faith Walk. And for those of you that are early birds, um, we see you in the morning tomorrow in Timothy 
and of course testimony Friday you know, for the early morning sessions on Thursday and Friday. I pray that you go in peace and serve the Lord your God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Blessings to every single one. Thank you. Take care. God bless. God bless. Thanks, Ava. Good to see you, Naz. Good to hear you as well. You too. Bless you.